Stephen, we've been talking about a number of things around LMI, but it strikes me, based on conversations with a number of people, that there are a couple of elephants in the room that we should probably address. Okay? The big question that uh, I get a lot is, what about Puppet? All right, yeah, I get that question a lot too. Puppet and OpenLMI are really addressing different use cases. Puppet is a fantastic tool when you want to say, that server over there needs to look like this. Puppet will go and make the system look that way, whatever it takes to do that. Mm -hmm. OpenLMI is more about performing changes on a system. Mm -hmm. You might want to use it more in the case of a business rules management system, for example, where a certain set of stimuli wants, you want it to result in a certain set of changes on the machine. It's a far more dynamic solution than Puppet, and it's less prone to lags if you wanted to try and make Puppet perform those same actions. On the flip side, I believe that they're complementary because I believe that OpenLMI, as an interface to the low-level system functionality, can be a powerful tool leveraged by puppet factors to actually make a system look the way it uh, wants it to. Okay, so you're suggesting that it's not a question of puppet or open LMI. You're suggesting that um, system administrators should be using both puppet and LMI to uh, manipulate the system depending on the sort of tasks that they're doing. That's correct. That's not, that sort of makes sense. Now, are Puppet and OpenLMI going to interfere with each other? No. They, the idea is that OpenLMI should always use the standard interfaces on the system and won't change anything in a way that, Puppet, that would make it unmanageable by Puppet. Right, right, right. So that's one of the big benefits that comes from using the standard Linux tools to do the actual work of the system. Correct. Okay. The other advantage uh, OpenLMI brings to the table that Puppet really can't do is the monitoring and query capabilities that OpenLMI provides are very comprehensive. Puppet is great for making a system look like something. OpenLMI is great for, uh, for asking it, do you actually look that way? Okay, so for something like um, mm -hmm. adding a new volume, uh, extending the volume group and so forth so that you've got more space, that's something that uh, LMI would be good for because yes. you can ask the system um, how it's configured and set up, you can ask what drives are on it, you can take the drive, you can manipulate the uh, volume groups and all the rest of that. That's a good example. Uh -huh. Okay. And another, then, another good example would be dealing with a RAID, uh, RAID failure. Right. If you can get an open LMI indication that says, hey, a disk failed and then you can use OpenLMI to go and change out that disk and rebuild the RAID set. And if you need to change a configuration setting on a hundred um, HTTP servers um, mm -hmm. that are out in your web farm so that uh, they've got a common configuration, uh, you could either write a script in LMI and do a loop there, or you could uh, do that puppet and then just let puppet blast it all out. Right. So you've got different ways of working with it. Yep. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Other thing that uh, comes up a lot with system management is you have a lot of access to that set. Basically, you own the server yes. when you're doing system management. So security is a big deal. Right. So. First of all, all communication with OpenLMI goes over a TLS encrypted HTTP channel. Uh, we recommend that you use proper certificate management when dealing with OpenLMI. Uh, the easiest way, of course, being with uh, the certificate authority built into FreeIPA or the Red Hat Enterprise Identity Management Server. And what about the other big one out there? Or Active Directory. Oh, so this actually works with Active Directory? It does, yes. Excellent. We also require uh, in the protocol that every communication with the server maintains uh, authentication data. So all, all communication has credentials provided with it uh, that we then use to authorize on the, uh, on the management system. Okay, so far that sounds good. 
right now we support uh, password-based authentication mm -hmm. using HTTP Basic, uh, and in the very near future we are also going to be supporting uh, GSS API-based auth authentication. So what does GSS API give us? Single sign-on capabilities uh, when signed into a domain such as Active Directory or Red Hat Enterprise Identity Management. Oh, so if I understand this, with the GSS API support, you have your uh, login, your credentials as part of the domain login, you register that system to the domain, and then you don't actually have to have uh, the local um, account and password on the machine, you're using the domain authentication for all of that. That's correct. And, and the intention is to fully integrate that into um, LMI? Yes, that will, be capable, that will be added to the LMI commands and the LMI shell scripts. Sounds like good stuff. We've been talking about a lot of things here, and I, I'm quite excited about um, OpenLMI. So, I want to use, this is actually going to help me, so what do I need to do to use it? All right, well, the first things we want to do is have you install it. Play with it a little bit. Uh, it's available on Fedora 20 and Fedora Rawhide. It's also available in the RHEL 7 beta and release candidate. Okay. And the easiest way to start with it is to use the LMI shell and the LMI commands. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things in there. Uh, there's a, there's obviously a lot of power to LMI, but I'm really excited about what you were showing me with the LMI shell. Right. There's a, yes, there's a lot of power in the low-level API, but the high-level API that we've built in the form of the commands and the modules is extremely easy to pick up. It's very quick and it's very it's also very powerful uh, for scripting. Now, what if there isn't exactly what I need in there? Well, first of all, uh, all of the scripts are, are open source. Uh, they're written in Python, so it's very easy to take, uh, take it out, look at it, see, oh, make a few changes here. And ideally, if these are very useful add-ons, we'd like to see you contribute those back to the open source project so that you and other contributors can eventually use it as well. So you're telling me that LMI is not just a canned, prepackaged, here it is, uh, take it and use it. It's actually something that it, it works with the Linux philosophy of here's a starting point, here's a base system that does good stuff, and make it do what you want. Absolutely. And you're also actually advocating cookie cutter programming that I don't have to work from first principles and do everything from scratch, you're actually suggesting that I should find something close and tweak it to exactly what I need? Yes, and we are attempting to grow an upstream community of admins who share those scripts uh, and make it available. Anything that's not you know, secret sauce for their environment, make it available to the other administrators out there so over time this library of scripts will grow and everyone's life will just get easier. Radical. And then, since this is Linux, I assume there's no documentation for anything. Oh, far from it. Uh, we actually have very comprehensive API documentation on the low level, um, and built into the LMI commands are, and the LMI shell modules are very detailed documentation on the specific capabilities that we've exposed there. Uh, particularly in the LMI commands, uh, any command that you can write you can, has a help argument that will give you a great deal of, ex of explanation as to what the command can do. And all of the LMI shell modules that the OpenLMI project upstream has built are very well commented and usable as examples for cookie cutter programming. So let me see if I understand this. I'm using the command line interface and it, it, that's really simple, beautiful piece of work there and there's help commands built into that, so I, I can probably just live inside the um, LMI shell for most of the stuff I'm doing. Well, you might want to come out for meals. Uh, point, and well, we're not gonna go there. Uh, diving down, there's a set of scripts that um, are available for doing uh, the tasks, and they're really designed to be hacked up and modified and used. Yep. And then there's the um, documentation, so that if I, interest in reading the manual, there's actually a manual to read. That's correct. And then, Several. even better. And then to just really go off the deep end, if um, I need to do something completely new, if I need to write a new uh, provider or modify the provider, 
we've got the source code to uh, all the providers. We've got the complete tool chain for building providers. So if I need to do some very low level work, I can extend one of the existing providers or I can write one completely from scratch. That's correct. Now, if I write one from scratch, does it uh, integrate into LMI shell or am I completely on my own? It will integrate into the LMI shell layer. Uh, you will have to write your own modules if you want to simplify it. Okay. But you'll be able to talk any, any SIM uh, communication inside of LMI shell, but you may have to talk to the low level API. Okay, so I write provider, I register it with the Pegasus SIM mom, and it talks to LMI shell. So I've got the full LMI shell capabilities. I would have to uh, write uh, new scripts or modify the existing scripts to talk to this new provider, but I can do that. Yep. And I can even add commands to the CLI. That's correct. I'll take two. <laughs> All right. And the other thing is we should probably say a little bit more about some of the other things. So there's uh, the different languages. If I want to work with Java, I can work with Java. If I want to work with C++, I can work with C++. That's right. Um, so these are delivered and supported as part of the LMI project. Uh, is that all there is, or is there a broader ecosystem that has additional capabilities that are not necessarily part of the core LMI? Okay. To clarify, uh, the Python solution is delivered and, man and maintained by the OpenLMI project. The others are endorsed by it. Uh, they are standard WebM interfaces for Java, for C++, for C, uh, that we support their use, uh, but they are shipping from other upstream projects. Okay. And then what else is out there? Uh, for example, what if I like Ruby? Well, yes, you don't need to go there. But what if I like uh, Ruby? Come talk to us. There is preliminary work out there to support Ruby as well. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, there's also some discussion about a REST API. Aha! Uh, uh -huh. And I recently learned that there is, in fact, a Perl uh, interface to WebM as well. That's just wrong. That is. Okay. So we should probably say a little bit more about how to get in touch with us and where to get some of these. I'm Russ Doty with Red Hat. You can uh, reach me through my email. I'm Stephen Gallagher, also with Red Hat, and you can reach me through my email. The Upstream project is creatively available at www.openlmi.org. And we have maintain a blog on OpenLMI at techponder.wordpress.com. There's a mailing list out there. And we can always be reached on our IRC channel on Freenode. Very good. So. Thank you for spending some time with us. We're looking forward to having you try uh, LMI, see how it can help you with your Linux system management. We'd be delighted to hear comments, feedback, suggestions, questions, and we would like to invite you to join us in the Open LMI community to grow and expand the capabilities of this powerful management tool. We would also certainly love to hear some bug reports. There's bugs. There are always bugs and we would like to, to knock them out. Very good. Thank you.